Good morning to the Drive to School podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Pastor Goodman. I'm the content executive here at Higher Things. And joining me today is Pastor Matt Richard. It's great to have you back, Pastor. How are you doing? Hey, it's good to see you up there, Harrison. I appreciate you joining us. So we've been tackling this series, What Does Jesus Say About? So that we actually know uh, how to address these these all too common words. Today, you picked a, a potent one for the, the time of the year. Uh, we're, we're, we're asking, what does Jesus say about worry? What does Jesus say about worry? Yeah. Well, I think of that passage in the uh, uh, gospel in Matthew, where he says, uh, I'll just kind of read it here. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. I love what he says here, what, what you will eat, uh, what you will drink, or about your body, or what you will wear. And so he's talking about all these things. And gosh, I don't know about, about you, but I know for myself, when I, when I start thinking about all the different things in my life, and I think about all the things going on, and I, like right now I have this, this big crisis. Like, what do I do with my pickup? I got 153,000 miles on my pickup. And I'm like, what do I do? I, I need transportation. And then I was going through, I'm like, man, my clergy shirts are getting worn out. Okay. Do I buy new clergy co- uh, shirts or not? And then you start thinking about your health and you start thinking about uh, uh, finances and you start thinking about all these other things. And next thing you know, it's, it's what I call the divided mind. We, we get pulled apart and, and, and all these different things, they, they pull on us. And so I'm being pulled here and being pulled here and being pulled here and being pulled there. And it pulls us apart and, and worry sets in. And then that worry can paralyze us. And then we can uh, become overwhelmed. And then anxiety can uh, set in and then stress can set in and then depression. And it's just, ah, and, and it doesn't help either, you know, especially with um, the, the advent of, of all the technology, these, these little cell phones, which are so incredibly cool but yet they pull us in all these different ways as well. And this is especially, I think, for uh, the young men and women uh, that are in high school and college and thinking about all the classes they have to take, this class and this class and this class and this class, and then all the social media being uh, pulled over here, pulled over here, and all the news that's coming at them. And it has a way of like uh, ripping us apart, pulling us apart. And yeah, there, there's worry there a lot. Right. It's, it's sort of grabbing hold of all of the things that I am sure I would do different if I was God, but since I'm not, and I can't, I just, all I, all I get to do is fester on it. And you, you devote all your, your sort of time and energy towards a thing that you can't control. And it just leaves you paralyzed. And, and you're right. It just sort of puts you into a loop and then you throw in a second loop and it's just, it, it, it's torture. <laughs> it, it truly is. Um, so obviously the answer is just to shut off the worry and not do that anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if we if we turn off our, our cell phone or we, we we block some of those things out, you know, it, it has a way of creeping back in, you know, and, and 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 the thing is, like, with I think of our, our technology, especially in and, and, uh, and permit me a, a little story here. I just I, I remember I remember my grandma Sally and uh, sweet lady grandma Sally, and she she was just the typical uh, Midwestern farm wife and. And she would uh, cook mashed potatoes and gravy and food. And I'd remember going to grandma's house and she'd be in her kitchen and she would just be singing these hymns, singing and cooking. That's it. Just cooking and singing. That's it. I remember the other day, not, I'm not certainly not trying to pick up my wife here, but this is kind of amazing. I remember driving home and I pulled up and I was on my phone and I looked in, I saw my wife and I walked in and she's on the phone talking to a client. She used to do photography. Her laptop is going uploading photos she's cooking with one hand dishes are going on behind her i go downstairs laundry is being washed and uh, laundry is being dried and then i came around the corner and we had this we're given this little vacuum cleaner that would go around and then this thing's vacuuming the floor and i'm looking at my wife i'm like my goodness you're washing dishes washing clothes drying clothes talking to a client cooking vacuuming and uploading photos all i mean all at the same time and so this technology we have is as much as it's good and it tells us it'll save us time. I think, unfortunately, some of this technology has created an atmosphere where we're doing multiple things at one time and then we're getting pulled apart. And so uh, that's unfortunate where I look at my grandma, Sally, uh, since she didn't have that technology, she just did what one thing. Uh, and, and I think in a lot of ways, us humans uh, we, we're good to a certain extent to multitask, right? That's kind of a cool word, a multitaskers. Um, but when we multi, multitask too much and those different things pull at us and they create anxiety in us, we get pulled apart. And uh, that's not good. And uh, it's not good at all. And Jesus calls us, he says here, I tell you, do not worry. Now, 
again, you know, is it just shut it off? You know, does it say Harrison, just stop worrying. And we talked about this before, you know, Hey, stop having fear, you know, stop having guilt. Well, that doesn't really help. Right. Uh, so what does he say? Uh, he says, seek the kingdom of God. In other words, look at one thing, you know, look at one things, which is me, Christ for you. And all these other things that we can't control in life. Cause it, there's many things we simply can't, you know, we can't control a lot of these things in life. And so we look to Christ and we trust Christ and we commend those to him and we live day by day, trusting him um, that he will see us through this veil of tears, the tears, this, this life of, of uh, constant ups and downs left and rights. Right. That's a really important uh, sort of context that you're sort of placing it in because I, I remember this, this classic Luther quote that where he says, you know, I pray an hour a day, except when I'm so busy that I can't possibly get everything done. And then I pray too. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember the first time that I heard that I felt like such a sinner because first I don't pray an hour a day. And when I'm really, really busy, I pray less, not more. Um, because it's, it's, again, it's sort of that, that quest for control. But when God wants to confront this in Matthew 6, uh, Jesus, he, he says, look, you can be anxious about this if you really want to, but it's not going to serve you any good. You can't add a single hour to your life by worrying about these things. So rather look at the things that I will take care of and I'll take care of the physical things too. And it, it's sort of a freeing thing because you're right. We can sort of, we can devote mental energy. We don't have towards things we can't control, or we can remind ourselves of God's promises. We can sing a hymn. We, we can pray. We can, we can focus on the kingdom of God and the rest of these things will be added to us. It's not necessarily a do this, get that. Like if you just pray more or sing more hymns and life will just sort of work itself out, but it's that Jesus loves you. And so life will work itself out that, that Jesus loves you so much that even if everything that you're worried about does go wrong, that the last great enemy rears its ugly head, you die. He simply will say, no, that's not allowed. You're baptized. And he's going to pull you back out of the grave and set you into the resurrection of the body. And so there you will you will finally be free it's not how much can i endure until i die or how much can i pray and so i don't have to worry in the first place but rather all the things that you can't control you don't need to control because god's got it yeah absolutely i mean we look at the he gives this example in, in in matthew 6 of the birds of the air and and if you think of birds you know uh came out the other day and i heard the birds chirping and all that and and you think of birds they're, they're they're definitely busy and we have a we have a tree on our front yard and we have a big porch uh in our house we live uh, east of minot in a small town called surrey and and uh there's a railroad that goes right across kind of nostalgic little area and there's this tree in this uh every year these uh, birds come to lay their eggs and they build their nests there and we watch them and and boy they're busy uh they're definitely busy now so when jesus says what uh, do not worry it's not that we just are lethargic and we just lay around and drink mountain dew and eat cheetos and and, uh, you know, Jesus will take care of me. Well, there's a busyness, definitely busy. The bird is busy doing its work. Um, we're doing our vocations. And that kind of brings up the whole point. If you think about this doctrine of vocation, and as I teach this with our confirmation students, vocation are the hats that we wear, the responsibilities we have. That's so like right now I have my collar on. And so right now I'm in the vocation of pastor. And so when I go home, the collar comes off my, um, farm hat comes on my baseball hat I have a baseball farm hat. I pop that on and then I'm what husband and father. And, and those are my vocations. And so when we look at those vocations. Oftentimes we get concerned about things that are not in our vocation. And if they're not in our vocation, we don't even have the power to uh, take care of those things. And so I sometimes turn on the politics and I get worked up about things that uh, legislatively uh, that I can't do because I'm not the president of the United States, nor would I want to be. And, and, and I'm not a politician. I'm not a senator. I'm just a citizen. So to the extent that I can work as a citizen, that is where uh, my ability kind of begins and ends. Um, but to understand there's things that are out of my control, out of my vocation, uh, that are out of my control. But what I do have before me is my vocation as a pastor, uh, my, my vocation as a father and a husband. Those things are right before me. And those are the things that I'm called to, to minister and to, to, to work hard in uh, for the sake of my family and trusting that the Lord Jesus Christ will take care indeed of everything else that's outside of my, my realm of my vocation, outside of my, my role. And that's a lot of ways too, with, with uh, young men and women as well, you know, looking at their vocation as students. Right. And sometimes I see uh, young men and women, they start getting concerned about things that are off in the future. Well, right now you're just a student and uh, called to be faithful as a student and uh, trusting Jesus to, uh, walk you through that, that he's prepared good works in advance for you to walk in, in those vocations. 
and uh, that there's other things in the distance that you can't control. So we trust Jesus for that, that he will provide, that he will take care of those things. That's awesome. And it's, it's such a freeing thing then to have vocation almost set against the very best of your intentions, um, because intentions are, are wonderful. And nobody means bad most of the time, but it, it's well, uh, apart from God's promise to work through you in this vocation, this calling, this hat that you wear, it can so often be led uh, not only astray, but, but downright for evil. Um, everybody sort of reaches outside of their vocation with the best of intention to, to worry about things that they're not given to worry about, to fix things that they're not necessarily even given to fix. Um, and instead, the vocation is a freeing thing because here God gets to place us back within the place where he's promised to work for us and through us so that we can focus on the things that we've been given to do and just commend the rest to him. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and again, it's, it's, it's uh, um, maybe a way of saying too, vocation is basically staying in our lane, right? Uh, oh, okay. Stay in our lane. I mean, again, you look at the, you look at the bird, the bird just collects branches and gets worms and uh, it, it provides for its little chickies, you know, and, 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 and it does its job there. And uh, that's beautiful. So again, it's not that the bird is not busy. Uh, it's that the bird, what doesn't worry about all these other things, you know what I mean? Cause they're outside of the bird's vocation of being a bird, right? The same thing for us. Um, I think oftentimes we take on too much and that's where, you know, again, I'm not trying to be too hard on technology, but oftentimes I think technology and our cell phones, they, they create an atmosphere of things that are not in our realm of vocation. And so, you know, I'm just kind of contemplating this from a perspective too, where, you know, I've talked to many young men, and young men and women and other people too, where uh, you have maybe a friend that's going through a struggle. Well, yep, you're called as a vocation to be there for your friend, but there are limitations to that, uh, mm -hmm. where your vocation puts an end to it, where you're not a pastor to your friend. Uh, maybe you're not a psychologist or uh, a doctor to your friend. And there's a point in time where your vocation ends. And that's where your friend needs to be commended to another vocation. And uh, that there's a sense where we, we can also say there's a burden to our vocations as we suffer for our neighbor. And so uh, there are things that are in my concern as a pastor. I can, I'm concerned about my flock, the sheep within St. Paul's uh, to be there for them. And that's healthy and that's good. Uh, that's a burden that I, I'm called to bear as I serve my neighbor. But there are burdens that are outside of that vocation that I'm not a not a physical doctor, you know, a, a physician. Um, you know, there, there are mental health things that I, I cannot uh, deal with. The, I'm not a police officer. So those things are not within my basically jurisdiction to to be concerned with. And so I commend those to the other vocations, knowing that God is going to be working through those other vocations to provide for my parishioners. And it's the same thing with young men and women uh, within when, within school and so forth. Uh, that they're called to be friends, be uh, good friends for one another. But there are times and situations where uh, their friends need to have pastors and physicians and, and uh, teachers uh, to, to help take care of them as well. So would you say then that, that worry is, is sort of, it, it's worry is love apart from vocation. It, it's, it's sort of a, a love that of a person or a thing that's met with intention rather than vocation. Yeah. Can we, I think, I think I understand what you're saying. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically, you know, we love one another within our vocation. And mm -hmm. I think we can err when we start trying to be concerned about other people outside of our vocation. You know, in other words, uh, in other words, if I start trying to act like a physician, I don't, I don't have the ability to, to be a doctor, a medical doctor. And so then if I start getting concerned in that medical realm, then I've overstepped my vocation. Whereas I can say to my parishioners, uh, God be praised that there's actually a medical doctor that can take care of your cancer. And I know for myself, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to pray for that doctor. I'm going to trust that the Lord is working through that doctor. And if, if there's some complications with that doctor, we find another doctor that the Lord has yeah. provided to take care of. And so therefore I'm, I'm not going to be consumed with my thoughts worrying about that because I have no control over it. I have no control over it. And ultimately that vocation of that doctor is, is, is God working through that doctor to provide health for my parishioner. So I can say, God be praised. And I'm going to pray for that doctor. And I'm going to lift up and encourage that doctor, uh, knowing that that doctor has the best intention of taking care of my parishioner. So again, it's love within my vocation and right. also loving my parishioner outside my vocation, but trusting those other vocations, those other uh, people and those other jobs to do what they're called to do for my parishioners. That's brilliant. 
Thanks so much. Yeah, that's that's what Jesus has to say about worry. Uh, Pastor Richard, thank you so much for joining us today at the Drive to School. Absolutely. Good, good to see you, Harrison. Have a good one. Yep.